All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the November 16th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Tonight is our public comment night, so we hear from you uh, folks who are interested in the projects and are speaking uh, about them. Uh, and that is all we do, or pretty much all we do tonight, is listen to or take your feedback on the merit of the projects that are before us. So thank you all for, for being here. We'll get to, the, get to that in just a moment. We have um, just a couple quick items of business to attend to before we, before we begin that. And the first is, we always start with general public comment. Is there anyone who would like to talk about uh, issues pertinent, relevant to the Community Preservation Committee that did not have to do with the projects in front of us this evening. If so, could you do your little hand, your little Zoom hand raise there under the reactions and we could entertain your comments. Uh, in the absence of any hands that I'm seeing, I think we will uh, move forward. Um, we have, on the agenda approval of uh, minutes from August the 24th. That was our St. John Cantius discussion in our unusual summer meeting. Uh, is there a motion by a CPC member to approve those minutes? Move to approve. Uh, thank you, Chris. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, thank you. Uh, any discussion on the minutes of August the 24th? Uh, okay, um, Sarah, can you take us through a roll call vote on that? And remember, sure. folks, that committee members who were not there, you're still allowed to vote to approve. All right, and uh, I'm—I'll do a roll call uh, because we have to. But I'm, there are a lot of people here, and I. I may miss a CPC member or two. So if I miss you, just jump in afterwards. Julia? Yes. Jonah? Yes. Martha? Yes. Chris? Yes. Yeah. And Brian? Uh, yes. And anyone I missed? Jana and yes. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. For that. I know it's not your favorite thing in the world doing minutes, particularly when they were as involved as this the St. John Cantius discussion, but you do a wonderful job in trying to capture some of our uh, great wit and humor or lack thereof. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, next on the agenda item is the chair's report. I have just a couple things, and folks may have seen this when it came in through the email from the, uh, the statewide CPC coalition folks. One is uh, Governor Baker in one of his last acts of governorship um, appropriated 20 million in fiscal year 22 state surplus funds for the CPA trust fund. So that's really nice. So that's an additional 20 million that uh, just we get because we're most important. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. That's not true. Uh, that, the, that the state folks that that everybody gets. Sarah doesn't know how much of that money will come to us of that 20 million and how much and, and the timing of that. But at some point, and after we hear public comments, uh, Sarah's gonna lead us through a little bit of a financial update. So it's nice to know that, um, that the coalition does good work on our behalf and has prompted the governor to appropriate, well, this, this legislature to to pass that and then the governor to appropriate that. The other thing in this um, in fact, case people hadn't noticed, we had an election last week uh, and there were a number of towns, five towns that voted to approve their community preservation acts. Uh, and, uh, and that is Boylston, Natick, Shelburne, our own Shelburne, Westboro, and a big one, which is Worcester. So those are five new communities, 194 uh, municipalities in Massachusetts have approved 
70% uh, of the state population. So that Worcester one is a big one. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's great news for Worcester. For us, it means that when the state surplus comes in, we get a little less piece of the pie. But congratulations to folks in those five towns voting to, uh, voting to uh, approve. And I'm sure they will do good work in those, in those towns. All right, moving right along. Uh, this is the time for us to hear from all the folks out there regarding the uh, number of different exciting projects that we have on the docket. Uh, let me explain what the process is. Um, the process tonight is simply public comment. We will listen to what you have to say and we will not uh, respond unless there's a real question there to Sarah or something. We, we simply listen um, and, uh, and take notes and that's it. You're also welcome to do written comments that can go into Sarah and then are posted on the web that we can read those as well. If you know friends or family or uh, associates that are, were not able to make this meeting tonight, um, they can certainly do so in a written format and we try to do our due diligence in reading, reading all of those. Um, what we ask is that you recognize that there are a lot of folks wanting to speak. So we try to limit your comments to three minutes or so. Um, if we go on a little longer, we won't cut you off. But if you go on too long, we'll make faces or do something. Uh, so just recognizing that that there are a lot of folks out there who want to speak. And that's, that's a great thing. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that two weeks from now on December the, uh, or is it the end of November? Whenever our next meeting is, two weeks from now, Sarah, when is that? Oh, it's first Wednesday in December. Three weeks. Right? Yeah. Three weeks, is that what it is? Three weeks from now is when uh, we will be making our funding recommendations. You are welcome uh, to attend that as a Zoom meeting. Uh, you are welcome to attend all of our meetings, as always. For those recommendations, uh, public is invited to attend, but the recommendations are made solely by the CPC board. But for folks wanting to sit in uh, to try to be maximally, maximally, we try to have maximum transparency. So we really encourage folks to, to sit on that. And again, for, for all of you to know, we are a recommending body. So we uh, represent a lot of different interests and hopefully all of your interests in the city. But when we vote to recommend, it goes to city council and ultimately city council is the one that appropriates the money. If we do not recommend a project, uh, it, it dies, it's a strong word, with us. City council cannot go back and look at that. But if we do recommend a project, city council um, could choose not to fund that. And that rarely, if ever, happens because fortunately the city council has trust in the volunteer committees that do a lot of the work for the city and recognize that uh, um, that we, we brought a lot of thought into this into this process. Uh, so you can so. It's a this is a little more difficult to do in Zoom to hear people people's comments, but I think what we'll do is just have you raise your hands. Hopefully, you know how to raise your hands in in Zoom, and if that's difficult for you, you can just do a real wave at the end. Uh, and rather than going project by project, I think we'll just have your hands raised, and we'll call on you. Uh, what hands going up? People know the drill. Um, uh, I will take the liberty of calling on you and then you can do your three minutes. Um, and again, if you can unmute yourself uh, when you're called on and then mute yourself back so there's minimum, uh, minimum disturbance, uh, feel free to repeat what other people say. If they've stolen your thunder, thunder away again, that's, that's okay. Uh, and again, know that uh, we have a lot of money in the budget Record to to know that we have a whole another round of projects that are coming in, 
in the spring. We don't know what those are yet. Uh, so um, it may be that we do not fund the project to its full ask, or we don't fund it at all. And often that's not due to the merit of the project, but it's due to some of the limited finances that we have. Fortunately, we, are, we're, um, we have quite a bit of money out there. In fact, for this uh, rest of this fiscal year, which is this funding round and next funding round, we have $1.8 million left. Uh, again, that's for the fall and the spring. So that's that's a pretty good chunk of change for us to be spending on, on some of these wonderful projects out there. All right, I've talked enough. So let's begin and we'll start with, I'm just gonna go in the order of my screen that, that, that I can see. Start with uh, Julie Spencer Robinson. Julie? Hi, my name is Julie Spencer Robinson. I'm the vice chair of the Smith Vocational and Agricultural Board of Trustees. And I'm speaking on their behalf tonight. The Smith Charities Building Downtown is an architectural prize and of course, an important historical building, exactly the right kind of project to receive support from the Community Preservation Act Fund. Moreover, it houses a charity organization whose work benefits members of our community. The building requires emergency repairs to preserve it. And I urge you to approve the funds that will make these possible, restoring the stone exterior, rebuilding the chimney, and adding attic collar ties to stop the walls of the building from pulling apart. We can't imagine our downtown without the presence of this beautiful structure. All of us at Smith Folk would be so grateful if you would approve the request of Smith Charities. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Julie. And if folks could do what Julie did, which is introduce yourself with your name, even though we can generally see your name and also your address, that is helpful. So thank you, Julie, for leading by example there. Uh, Mimi? Yes, hi everyone. Um, my name is Mimi Odgers and I live at 97 Glendale Road in Northampton. I am actually also speaking on behalf of the Smith Trustee Building. Um, I am the current elector under the Oliver Smith will that represents the city of Northampton. Um, and I actually wanna just share some words from another Northampton resident um, that um, this person is Nancy Foley who lives on Ice Pond Drive Road. Uh, she said that she would like to add the support for the application for the Community Preservation Funds for Smith Charities. As a lifelong Northampton resident, I've had the opportunity to visit this building on many occasions. It is a historic landmark in downtown Northampton. And as a taxpayer, I wholeheartedly support their application for CPA funds. Smith Charities has always been a hidden gem in our city, and I have been extremely fortunate with the assistance they have given me. My mother received a widow benefit on my behalf when my father passed away in 1975 and I was a minor. I later received the bride's benefit when I got married and just last month paid off my mortgage with Smith Charities. My hope is that the electors under the will of Oliver Smith will be able to continue the valuable work they do for our community so others may be as fortunate as myself. Again, that was from Nancy Foley from Ice Pond Drive. Um, I would also like to say that as a lifelong resident of Northampton, I am fully in support of using taxpayer money for this building. It is definitely a historic landmark. Um, it is a building that sometimes people don't always notice downtown, but if uh, the, these needed repairs are not done and there's a the risk of how the building could start coming apart and things, if that, if that was not, if that building couldn't be repaired, it would leave a gaping hole um, you know where where it is and so we really really are just asking please for the cpc funds thank you so much thank you Mimi. uh mark hi thank you my name is mark sternick i live at 130 turkey hill road in florence and i'm an architect and i have been um giving some time to Habitat for Humanity. And I'd like to speak in favor of uh, the Victoria Bismarck Farm project, receiving some of these funds, um, the work that they that Habitat does to give, uh, to provide affordable housing for people in need. Um, they have a wonderful system and they have a lot of really good, really talented people putting their time in to not only provide this housing, but make it uh, make it 
as state of the art as as can be affordable for the incredibly sm uh, small budgets that they have to put these together. So I'd, I'd really, I think it's a wonderful thing for Northampton to get behind. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Karen? Hi, um, I'm Karen Gangler, 48 Massasoit Street. I'm currently the first vice president and chair of development for NCMC. <clears throat> I also sing in a women's ensemble called High Definition. I've been involved with the Music Center in one way or another for over 30 years. I first joined a woman's chorus called A Little Lunch Music not long after I was invited to become a member of the board of directors and was thrilled to become part of the planning, development, and governance of the organization. I think it's really important to emphasize that a lot of thought went into choosing the name of the organization. The words community and center are central to our mission and the goals of NCMC and set us apart from other organizations whose mission might simply be to offer lessons. It's been truly exciting to be part of the group that searched for and found a new home for the center, first taking on the daunting task of renovating a building that was in bad shape with resident raccoons and crumbling walls in exchange for a long-term lease from the city and ultimately owning the building outright. <clears throat> I continue to sing with various women's ensembles as they changed through the years. And I took guitar and voice lessons. My son studied recorder and flute, initially through a partnership between the Montessori School and NCMC and later at NCMC's facility. Um, I've been most impressed recently by the fantastic job Jason and NCMC are doing, reaching out to the greater community, serving Alzheimer's patients, young children, special needs individuals, older adults looking to return to musical activities, refugees and asylum seekers, and the LGBT community to name just a few. Um, I guess my bottom line is that as NCMC continues to grow and serve more and more of the community, and in spite of the many improvements and modifications we have made, we still have a way to go to make our buildings safe, energy efficient and accessible. A grant from the Community Preservation Committee would help us make these important continuing improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Adele. Thank you. My name is Adele Franks. I live at 123 Black Birch Trail in Florence. And I am on the board of a local organization called Local Energy Advocates. And I am speaking in support of CPA funding for the three Habitat for Humanity homes uh, at the site of the former Victoria Bismarck Farm on Burt's Pit Road. We have clearly a need for more affordable housing um, in Northampton. And this particular project has the huge benefit in our view of um, being energy efficient um, to the extent possible and all electric and also offers home ownership pathway to uh, those who would otherwise have no access to home ownership. So we think um, this project is um, it should be fully supported by CPA funds, and we thank you very much. Thank you, Adele. Uh, Dusty? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dusty Christensen. I'm a parent of a two-year-old and a five-year-old who are absolutely in love with the uh, Northampton Community Music Center. Uh, looking at all the folks here with NCMC backgrounds, I can see that they're obviously not the only ones in love with the organization. Uh, I'm also a board member there, so naturally I'm here to voice support for the exterior restoration application that NCMC has submitted uh, to your committee. <laughs> The Community Music Center is such an incredible treasure. It's where my two little ones develop the confidence to sing out loud and dance in front of others, no matter how silly they might feel. Uh, when the pandemic hit and their social lives were ripped away from them, it gave us a virtual space to be in community with other families facing the same. And now as so many families, ours included, began to emerge from that isolation, NCMC is really a place where we feel safe gathering with others to build back those uh, those human and community bonds that we miss so much. 
Uh, it's a place where we met people from uh, all walks of life across our community coming together. Uh, for one thing, that's their mutual joy uh, of music. You can hear it when you walk by any of the, the rooms in that beautiful historic building. That place is just so full of joy and learning and love every single day. Um, I'm a journalist, so usually I don't speak at public meetings like this. I tend to hang out in the background and take notes. Uh, but I was really compelled to come out and speak today uh, because of the importance of, of this project in front of you. Uh, of course, it's the kind of project that CPA funds were meant for, ensuring that a historic building is, is preserved through improvements to its integrity and safety, accessibility, energy efficiency, all that stuff. Uh, that's clearly important. Uh, but I think it's also about supporting an organization that means so much to our community here in Northampton and beyond. Um, bringing people to Northampton and together to take part in the most human of activities, being creative and making music. Uh, so I want to thank you so much for considering NCMC's application and, and even more importantly for all your hard work and dedication serving on this uh, committee. Volunteer committees like this are the backbone of democracy. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Dusty. John? Thank you. Uh, I'm John Stifler. I live in Florence. Uh, I very much want to echo what Dusty just said and what Karen said about um, the value of support for all the upgrades, maintenance, and, and repairs that the Northampton Community Music Center building needs. Um, I was a member of the board of the, of the Music Center uh, a number of years ago. Also, for 25 years, I wrote about music for the Daily Hampshire Gazette and I spent a lot of time observing the music scene here, uh, performance music, and also very much uh, music lessons. The, what, what that institution has done for Northampton music is, is beyond calculation, it's tremendous. And um, besides the, the artistic and the musical growth of the people who have participated in it, what NCMC did for that building, which as Karen said, was, was basically totally derelict when the music center took it over, what they've done for that building right there, practically in the middle of Northampton, is, is so valuable to the community, including people who don't have anything to do with the music center at all. Um, so I think it's very well worth supporting and I strongly endorse the efforts to do so. Thanks. Thank you, John. Emily? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, my name is Emily Green and uh, I'm actually, I was a 10 year resident of Northampton, but now I'm in Holyoke. Um, this is my 21st year on the faculty at NCMC and I teach violin and viola there. I'm also the director of, of the Suzuki program. And I visited NCMC for the first time in 2000 actually as a voice student. Um, so I started as a student, but since then I'm also a parent to four kids ages five through 11 uh, who have participated in various NCMC programs. Um, and uh, first, I, I actually wanted to say thank you uh, to the committee for your past support and stewardship of our building. Um, we very much appreciate the restoration that's been possible already with your generosity. Um, during my time at NCMC, I've watched our program uh, build and grow. And I've seen the evolution of other programs at the center as well. And it's really exciting to see the tiniest kids come in wide-eyed, dragging their parents up the stairs to a, um, a music together class, or a slightly older students clopping downstairs to the downstairs recital hall for a group class. And then even older students uh, coming and driving themselves to the, to the building, uh, other kinds of events. Um, it's, it's really special to see the bonds between the families and between the kids and watching the little kids adore the big kids and look up to them and then have the big the little kids become the big kids. Um, so I feel like there's sort of like this generational thing that's happening that's really exciting also. Um, I'm really proud of our role in the community, um, specifically that we um, offer financial aid and we never turn away students because of financial need and that feels like a really important part of our mission. Um, you know, I, I was a music was a very integral part of my own growing up. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that my own children and the children of the community uh, have this opportunity also. And of course, none of the, the magic that we do is possible without a physical space. Um, I have such a visceral memory of the music buildings of my own youth. Um, and I know that NCMC is creating these memories now for families. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you so much for considering um, continuing your support of our programs. And thank you again so much for your time. 
Thank you, Emily. Uh, I'm seeing David's iPad. Hello, everybody. I am actually borrowing an iPad. Um, my name is Carmen Juno. I am the chair of the Northampton Housing Partnership. I'm here to speak in favor of all of the uh, projects that are um, supporting affordable housing. Um, they include, of course, the Habitat uh, Victoria Bismarck project, um, the affordable pro housing project on Evergreen Road in Leeds on Crafts Avenue, um, and possibly a few others I haven't mentioned. Um, on the housing partnership, we try to elevate the needs of affordable housing and workforce housing in our community. Um, you all know that there's a housing crisis. So every one of those projects is extremely valued. And I want to just put a shout out for all of the funds that have been requested here tonight for the various stages of these projects. Um, I wanna add that, you know, I am retired, but I do work about 10 hours a week at Cooper's Corner in Florence. Our staffing there has become thinner and thinner and everywhere you see help wanted, um, all shifts, et cetera. And you wonder about the intersection of lack of affordable housing with um, the jobs that are going wanting here. I think there are numerous factors for that, but that's one thought I wanted to put out there. So again, I'm speaking in, in um, favor of affordable housing. We love Habitat. They've done a fantastic job. It's so important to have people who are able to have home ownership here and not just be renters. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you so much. Uh, Bill? Hi. My name is Bill Feinstein. I no longer live in Northampton, although I did for over 30 years. I still practice in Northampton. Um, they call me the founder of NCMC. Uh, I'm one of several. Um, and um, I just want to invite you to come into the building if you have the time. And while you're there, to look at the photographs of what it was like when we finally got our hands on the building. It took me 10 years to convince the mayor of Northampton at the time that the school department might give up the building. Um, you might be amazed at uh, the courage that it took to turn this building from a, a ruined habitat for um, raccoons into the exquisite, vibrant place that it is now. In the work with the architect, Tris Metcalf, those many years ago, one of the commitments we made at the time was to preserve the building as um, an historical uh, building. So we kept the edifice the same and as much as possible, kept some of the features of the building. Um, as it was originally designed. Now it needs some more help, as you can see from our request. And you hold the keys in your hands, uh, for which we are really grateful uh, to have the opportunity to continue some of the improvements that this community organization has struggled to achieve for decades now. It's a resource beyond belief from someone like me who started it and there were 22 students in my living room uh, to over 1500 students now and uh, all of them taking part in some uh, really important life experiences that music together can offer. So thanks for your support in the past. I hope it goes forward. And thanks for this chance to um, talk with you. Uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, Mary, is that correct? 
Yes, it is. Can you hear me? Um, I'm Mary Hoberman. I am in the current president of the board of the Music Center, and I am so happy to be here and, and advocate for support on its behalf, along with everybody else who's spoken so far and others who probably will. Um, I'm also feeling a little under the weather, so please forgive me, but um, the our daughter is nine and a half now, and we live down the street from the Music Center. We've been part of the neighborhood here for over 10 years. Um, our daughter, Tessa, started lessons there with music together when she was 18 months, and now she's nine and a half and has been studying violin for six years, I think. And in addition to our experience as parents, um, our experience as as part of the neighborhood and neighbors and having the building be such a, um, such a vibrant part of the community um, is, it's really hard to measure um, the, the impact that it's had not only on the life of our child and our family and even grandparents, <laughs> um, but what I see in the community and what I see in the neighborhood and, um, and the continued investment in the building and in a community music program, I will ripple for years to come. So thank you for considering our application for additional improvements. Thank you, Mary. Stan? Thank you, uh, Stan Moulton. I am the Ward 1 City Councilor, uh, live at 34 Perkins Avenue, and I'm here speaking on behalf of the Community Investment Fund that is proposed by Pioneer Development. Uh, the principal partners in Pioneer, uh, Danny and Denise uh, McCann, are not only my constituents, they're neighbors. I have uh, had a number of conversations with them over the last year about this idea, which I see as a very innovative way of adding uh, to the city's toolbox to expand access to, uh, to affordable home ownership. This is a pilot project that would use existing housing stock near downtown to establish a revolving fund that will continue to support this lease to ownership model over many years. Uh, and it, it will involve, uh, will continue to involve uh, families uh, with no more than 80% of the area median income. So, so it's a way to uh, really uh, help to overcome the barriers that many low income households face in accumulating the down payment that's needed for home ownership as a way to build uh, multi generational wealth. So I, I, I urge you to consider this uh, project very, very carefully and, uh, and, and see it as I do as, as a real innovation in adding uh, access to uh, affordable housing in Northampton. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Susan? Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak on behalf of the Betty Allen chapter of the uh, Daughters of American Revolution. Our chapter house is located at 148 South Street in Northampton. It was built in 1754. This is the Betty Allen chapter, the Betty Allen house, and it is one of the finest remaining colonial houses in Northampton. It is in the Fort Hill Historic District and recorded in both the national and the state registration of historic places. The historical significance, the incredible age and the unbelievable condition of this two and a half story house has led to a partnership with the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. We desperately need your support for the renovation of this incredibly historic building. We have many, many partnerships with um, neighboring organizations and civic organizations and do a lot in terms of community involvement. We have the most incredible new 
Regent Denise Kinchi Goslin, who is here tonight, and I'm sure she will speak. She has brought new life to this chapter, and she has led us to the point of a campaign. We are raising money, and we totally need your support to make this become a reality. We are in the process of looking at the very, very important um, restoration and the removal of the knob and tube wiring in the house and the replacement of windows. We need so much work to be done. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support for this important historic renovation. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. So I'm, uh, Sarah, I'll turn to you on this as well. I'm not seeing hands, but I can't imagine with all the folks here that other people would not like to speak. Uh, oh, here we go. All right, here come some hands, thank you. So let's go with uh, Rob. Uh, Rob, if you can unmute yourself, yeah, I please. Did. I, I was waiting. I was waiting for the call to hands. Actually, um, I'm here as a longtime Northampton citizen, as a uh, construction volunteer, and a board member for Pioneer Valley Habitat to speak in favor of the uh, application for the Victoria Bismarck Farm project. Um, I, someone who spoke before me, was quite eloquent about the need for affordable housing and someone else was uh, also eloquent about the projects that over the years Habitat has built within the city and actually around the county. Um, it's hard to, uh, to say mine is better than yours because I hear a lot of people passionately plea for their pet projects. And in some ways, everybody's right. Um, it's a shame that Bill Gates doesn't live in town. But uh, I realize that to some extent, this might be a zero sum game. I don't know how much, uh, how, much fun, how much funding is available, but I can certainly say that anyone who speaks with one of our new homeowners whose life has dramatically changed by the ability to, uh, to live in a, an energy efficient, in fact, the ones we're building now are zero net energy, um, state of the art modern home. It's uh, it's quite a moving experience, and I think, as I say, there are many um, worthwhile projects here on the table today. But I, I'm again going to advocate that uh, Habitat deserves support, and I hope you all see it the same way. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Elizabeth. Hi, um, I'm Elizabeth Sharp, uh, co-director of Historic Northampton. I don't actually live in Northampton, but I'm <clears throat> here representing Historic Northampton. I want to speak for the DAR house um, and in support of the money for removing the knob and tube wiring. That house is a really important um, architectural piece of Northampton. It's one of the best shape mid 18th century, what you would call Connecticut Valley style, kind of high style, but in a restrained way because it's the Connecticut Valley. And um, it's really serves as kind of a gateway to our, our city. And I, I think that, um, I know it's so important. It's appeared in a lot of um, academic publications. Um, it's well known and the DAR has been good stewards of it over the years. And that's really important. So I encourage you to, um, help them keep it up for future generations and for all of us to enjoy in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, as someone eloquently said, call take hands here. If you'll put your hands up, um, that's helpful for us. Hands up, uh, here we go, uh, Denise. Uh, Denise, if you can unmute yourself.
Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak. Uh, clearly, there's so many worthwhile projects that you're considering, and uh, we hope that uh, among all of these other important uh, applications that you will strongly look in favor of the DAR. Uh, my name is Denise Kinchy Goslin, and I live right over the bridge in, in Hadley. I find that, um, of course, over the many years that I've been a resident, um, I spend a lot of time. I've worked in Northampton for many years, and, and it is such a lovely place to be part of. Since becoming the regent of the uh, DAR in Northampton, uh, I'm learning as well the historical significance and how deep it really does run and how important this building is for us to maintain. In 1925, when the um, DAR purchased this house, they looked at three different houses and the other two homes no longer exist. Um, this one was purchased and uh, we have taken good care of it since 1925 and, and hope to, with your support, continue to, to keep this uh, for the next generation to look at as well. Um, I think we play an important part in the community. Um, we've just opened up, for example, um, having the Sons of the American Revolution, SAR, come. They're going to be holding their meetings at this house as well. And now that COVID is over and we're opening it up, um, they're the first group that has said, yes, we'd like to be part of this. So that's a very exciting new venture for us as well. Um, the Nabin tube is dangerous, and um, we really feel that this is an imperative project. It's something that is extremely expensive. I know the um, prior um, regions have considered doing this before, but couldn't could not find or figure a way that we could afford to do it. With your support, we absolutely can do this project. And we're looking forward to, um, to taking care of this and maintaining it for the next generation. It's also an important um, part of the past, not only for the future, but not the past, um, in that um, we're learning so much more about the house that was originally owned by the Clapp family. Um, a we are learning, for example, that Sally Mamanish, um, one of the Native Americans at, that lived at the time of the Revolutionary War, lived in that house. And she is buried in, in the Northampton Cemetery, along with other Clapp family members. And um, she played an important part. Um, her brother, a Native American, also fought in the Revolutionary War. We look to, um, to explore more of this genealogy, which is one of the things that we, one of our missions. And uh, we feel that uh, we have an important part in the future of, of looking towards um, preserving and recognizing uh, those that have come before us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you, Denise. Jean? Uh, you need to un unmute yourself, Jean. One would think that'd be obvious. I'm, I apologize. Um, my name is Jean Savaris. I live at 36 Prospect Avenue in Northampton. And uh, I am in support of the Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity and would like to speak to that tonight. I've been um, involved in habitat for about 18 years now, I am a former employee of the Pioneer Valley Habitat uh, for Humanity here in town, and um, currently still a volunteer with the Women Build, which is going up on Burt's Pit Road. I'm in favor of uh, PV Habitat for the Victoria Bismarck Farms project. I, I would like to say that home ownership for people in need is of the utmost priority but also want to note that the new owners of the house also work on their own building. So they put in what we call sweat equity and, um, and truly love the house that they end up living in. I'm in favor of the CPA funds to um, going to PV Habitat for Humanity, but continuing this type of building, home ownership, and pride in our community. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Dick, 
thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Dick Evans. I live at 299 Birch Pit Road, which is nearly across the street, directly from the site of the Habitat Project, the uh, uh, the Victoria Bismarck project. I want to say that I, as well as other members of the neighborhood, thoroughly welcome this project to it. And I think that this project, uh, of all the worthy projects that have been discussed tonight, may do more than the others to actually preserve the community. Uh, and that's what this committee is all about, I know. Um, this The property where the site, the site is, it was, uh, was a mess for decades. Uh, they recently cleaned it up, and I look very much look forward to seeing the affordable housing going in with families and children. It will turn this neighborhood around. I like to point out that in the 20 years I've lived here, I've never had a gremlin at Halloween, and I look forward to doing so uh, when these families move into the neighborhood. So I endorse the Victoria Bismarck project, as I think all the neighbors do too. Welcome them and urge you to support it financially. Thank you, Dave. Okay, looking for other hands here. You can wave or you can do your hand. Uh, Donna? Yes, hi, thank you. I am speaking on behalf of Smith Charities, which is the owner of a historical building in the central in intersection in Northampton. Smith Charities provides a lot of community help. Um, and we would like to um, extend the, the um, progress that we've made in, in keeping that building right on um, it's at the corner right next to um, so what used to be Silverscape Designs. It's a historical building. We've done a lot of work there and we would like your consideration for our continued uh, maintenance of that building and maintain that historical property. This is a, an organization that provides a lot of community support and helps out many people in our area. And I am from Greenfield. As a recipient of the largesse of Smith Charities as a widow um, 30 years ago, I support this organization. It helps many people in the Valley and we need your support to help us maintain this historical building. It's in great shape, but we do need help. Um, in, uh, for the outside and the chimney, for the brickwork. And we've done a lot of work on that building through the years. And we need the support to continue to maintain that building, which is a major um, historical building in our historical district of Northampton. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Donna. Uh, let's see, Nancy. Thank you. My name is Nancy Cheevers and I am a very proud um, member of the Northampton Community Center's board. Um, and uh, I'm also a, a student at the school or at the community center. And I also have a 21 year old son who has had so many wonderful experiences at the community center. And I'm so glad to hear my colleagues talk about the community in the center because it is a place where people from our community and from surrounding communities come together. A couple of weeks ago, I sat in a beautiful um, concert in the afternoon where there were people from all over the place um, listening to some beautiful music. And there were a lot of seniors in the audience and it was a lovely space for seniors to come and, and listen to some music and find community with one another. And the same is true for my own experiences, taking lessons and meeting other people with similar interests. And also as a member of the school community, which I just retired from a year or two ago, 
Um, I also see kids coming into the center that might not play on a sports team, but they play violin and they find community at the Northampton Community Music Center. Um, my son still plays and he's 21 years old and he is still playing at his college and he still gets together with the kids that he met as a very young child at the Northampton Community Music Center. So um, thank you for considering uh, the uh, support for the center. We would be most grateful um, to get the, uh, the funds. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, Amy? Hi, I'm Amy Landry. Um, I work with Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity. And I just urge your support of the proposal put in by Habitat to, we requested funding to go toward building three affordable homes off Burt's Pit Road. Um, and as you all know, in a city where the median home price is well over $400,000, a family of four uh, earning 50% of the area media income or about $47,000, would barely qualify for $150,000 mortgage at our current interest rates. So CPA, CPA funding will contribute to Habitat being able to sell these homes for $200,000. And as Jean and Rob, uh, volunteers for Habitat pointed out, future homeowners contribute over 200 hours of sweat equity alongside hundreds of community volunteers uh, who build every Habitat home. The Northampton community has been exceedingly active in its investments of time and resources uh, to help make sure that our neighbors with low incomes who are ready to become first-time homeowners are welcomed to that opportunity. Uh, we, we just hope that you'll support Habitat's goal of developing a more diversified housing options uh, for a wider range of people in this wonderful community. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm having trouble reading your first name. Zemi, is it? Um, can you unmute yourself, please? Uh, okay, Jimmy, yeah. it's my nickname. And I am oh, recently okay. connected to the Northampton Community Music Center. But maybe I've, Mom collected some from around the house at one point. Yes. I belong to a group of older people with the New Horizons Band. And I want to say that the improvements to the Community Music Center building that allowed us, the old people who die from COVID, to go there indoors and learn an instrument, practice an old instrument, get together and avoid the loneliness of old people and provide a purpose for us besides grandchildren um, is just fantastic. But the they installed air cleaning devices, all kinds of stuff. We wear masks indoors and it really made it possible for those of us to go indoors and meet in a group and a continued improvements to that building would be so great. They've already used the money, other money or that your money for wonderful purposes. That's all. Thank you so much. Uh, now's a good time to raise hands for those of you it makes the process go a little easier. So again, going down, scrolling down you'll have that see that uh show options button and putting your hand up up oh, here, here we go so thank you for doing that carol hello thank you for recognizing me um yeah so um i'm speaking in favor of the smith charities application i'm actually a trustee and um as you know this is uh classic historic preservation work of an 1845 building. And uh, this building is part of the uh, historic downtown Northampton. Uh, that's the district is registered with the state. Um, but actually what I'm gonna do tonight is there are a few people that sent letters that couldn't be here and I'm going to read um, a couple of letters. Uh, 
So one person, uh, John Baronis, says uh, we're writing this letter to support Smith Charities because we feel strongly that they are deserving of this preservation grant. We have had mortgages with Smith Charities since 1994, and we are very pleased that the interest from our payments are being used to give deserving beneficiaries some monetary help in their pursuits of a career in a local trade or in nursing. It is our understanding they also give gifts to brides and yearly gifts to widows with children. The Smith Charities building is a landmark in Northampton and definitely deserves to be preserved as they have been giving back to the city of Northampton for over 170 years. We believe that they have paid out more than $8 million in gifts to beneficiaries of several communities, which includes thousands of dollars to Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School and beneficiaries who reside in Northampton and Florence. Uh, the Oliver Smith Will and Smith Charities continue to give back uh, to our community and to yours, and it should not go unrecognized. We fully support them and hope you will reward their efforts by granting them the funds to assist in preserving their beautiful building. Um, Donald and Hildy Olsey, um, she uh, actually had to go to the hospital today, so couldn't be here, but sent this letter. Uh, we're writing this letter in support of the grant applications submitted by the trustees of Smith Charities. The purpose of the requested grant is to make needed structural and aesthetic repairs to their beautiful historic brownstone in which they've conducted business for many years. We've had a long business relationship with Smith Charities beginning in 1972 when we first got our mortgage loan to build the home that we still live in today. Over the years we've applied for and received several additional loans. The process was always a pleasure working with their competent staff. And uh, we always paid in person so we could visit briefly with your employees and admire your beautiful building. In closing, we hope you find Smith Charities is worthy of the grant that they've requested. Not only will it benefit Smith Charities, but also will enhance the aesthetics of Northampton's Main Street. And the last letter I'd like to read is um, from uh, Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. And this is an organization that Smith Charities has had a relationship with since it was built. And this was actually part of the Oliver Smith will was that Smith Charities would support the Smith Vocational and Agricultural School. Uh, and uh, this letter is from uh, Laura Devine, who, um, uh, I'll, I'll just read it. She says, I am one of the school counselors and the guidance department head at Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. I've been at the school for the last eight years and I have never had the lecture luxury of stepping st stepping foot into the Smith Charities Brownstone building on 51 Main Street until the spring of 2020. I was amazed at how gorgeous the building is inside and out. Each year, a representative of Smith Charities comes to our school and presents to our eligible and deserving tradespeople. The students that complete the application are then able to use that money towards student loans and to purchase the necessary tools to further their trade. I can only imagine the cost needed to maintain such a gorgeous and historic building. Smith Charities is extremely deserving of this grant to make the necessary structural and aesthetic repairs to maintain such a magnificent and historic building. Um, so thank you for listening to those letters. Um, I believe you have them in hard copy form as well. But um, yeah, really, I just wanted to say that because we're a charity and we're a nonprofit, uh, these, these, this restoration work, which is really, it's, it's not repairs, it's the facade of the building and the chimney and uh, in, the, in phase one, uh, which, which your committee supported, uh, they, they, uh, they refurbished the cornice on the front. So there's very, it's not cheap, but it's really essential. And uh, the building has stayed intact for 177 years. So once this restoration work happens to the facade and the chimney and the, um, the, the stonework, uh, it will last into the next century, but there's just no way to get around trying to do it now and, uh, and doing it, uh, where you only build one scaffolding to, you know, instead of like, if you do it in piecemeal over years, then you have to keep rebuilding the scaffolding and it would just, the building right now is starting to pull apart. So it's really, uh, it's urgent. And this, uh, these, this project is all based on an assessment that was funded by CPA back in 2018. And they put together a whole, uh, a whole, uh, 
schedule of emergency repairs that that uh, that we're working through, and we're so the it's Jones Wisset Arc. Uh, with set architects, uh, their initial assessment is uh, what we're working through step by step, and we're hiring the same uh, stone uh, mason artisans uh, who are so experienced that they actually worked on the state capitol building in Boston. Uh, so they, this team has the expertise that's needed and uh, the work is urgent and we can't do it without your help. So I really hope you'll support our, our application. And, and I hope you can support the other worthy projects too, because they really all sound wonderful. Um, thank you for your time and for your service. Thank you, Carol. Uh, I'm gonna struggle with your first name, Gwena Vera, is that correct? Uh, Gwenevera, are you there? Uh, Lodi uh, Naiban, hands up. Okay, uh, you are muted in case you're trying to talk. There you go. Here we go. Okay, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Um, thank you. My name is Gwen DeBod and I live in Northampton and I'm here to speak on behalf of any housing that could be funded in Northampton. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Habitat for Humanity um, housing uh, that they've been working on on Bart's Pit Road and I'd also like to support the downtown um, City of Northampton affordable housing project and the Leeds Affordable Housing Planning planning and Sustainability Projects. Um, you know, it's just, you know, the COVID just really took, took, a, took a toll on, on real estate and um, accessibility for people to get housing and to stay in the city and work in the city and be a part of the community and, you know, be the workers that we need to support the economy here in Northampton. And so um, I think it's important that people can be able to live here too. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Patricia. Hello, uh, my name is Patricia Egan and um, I've been a member of the um, Betty Allen chapter of the DAR uh, for about four years now. And in those four years, I've learned so much um, regarding history and also, um, um, what the organization does in the community. Um, the house has belonged to the Betty Allen chapter for almost like uh, Denise, our regent mentioned, almost a hundred years. So the, the, the house and the organization um, um, are both in, an integral part of the community. Um, I love the way the um, group um, does have a base of operations in this historic house from some, we think about 1753 um, we, as an organization, support um, veterans in the um, VA hospital, current um, service members um, serving overseas, and then also um, the memory and uh, support of um, the um, Revolutionary War era um, soldiers. And um, I just think the um, you know, having the historic house in great condition is a good way for us to um, continue as um, a great organization that's been in in, um, in, um, in existence for um, you know well over a hundred years nationally and uh, locally. And so at this point, I'm just hoping that um, we can get the important upgrade to our um, electrical system uh, taken care of. Um, you know, Navatube, um, although historic, is not up to standard. And so if we could um, uh, have some help with that costly project, um, it'll reap a lot of benefits for um, you know veterans, um, current soldiers, and our history, as well as um, our organization and the whole uh, Northampton and greater Northampton community. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. George? Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is George Kohout. I'm at 234 State Street, um, zeroing in here. Um, I'm, I'm here to speak in, in uh, support of two applications, even though I will Second, the earlier person who said uh, so many of the applications deserve um, the CPA's um, support at this point. Um, the one that I'd like to speak in favor of to start with is the 
the Community Investment Fund. Um, I think the applicant has done a wonderful job in explaining this kind of creative approach to affordable housing, while at the same time um, helping people who normally don't have an opportunity to accumulate wealth, purchase property, and uh, kind of build their assets, which is very hard for so many folks in Northampton. Um, I think uh, the bonus too of this um, project is that um, it, it's taken some of the best practices from um, Habitat for Humanity. It, it helps to train new landlords about how to take care of uh, their buildings and their assets. It also uh, provides them with some wealth so that they have a down payment down the road um, for their own house. Um, so again, uh, serve, serving on the planning board for many years, um, we're faced by many applications for affordable housing, which is great. Often they're very large projects with very intricate funding. Um, and this one is a, a, another unique piece, I think of our affordable housing toolkit which I think it would be great to run this pilot project um, because it's a, an extra tool, an extra creative um, piece of the affordable housing pie. So again, uh, my strong support for this grant, which is this application for $100,000. Um, and Mr. Chair, can I, can I jump into another one at the same time or do I need to go back in the queue? No, 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 please. Okay. Uh, keep going. All right. So the next one, uh, the planning, uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability has a number of great applications in front of you. Um, as a member of the Friends of Northampton Trails, I would like to support the uh, application for support of the Rocky Hill Greenway. Um, this is the, the multi-use trail that will be built between, that's in the design process, to connect Route 66 by Ice Pond Drive down to Route 10, really, where the Northampton to New Haven Canal Greenway extends, the bike path to East Hampton. It's a crucial link that'll help the people in Florence and the west part of Northampton really access the network of trails. Um, the city has already put a lot of work into the design and planning. And I think this piece from the CPA will help put it over the edge. Um, so I'd like to add my support for that application also. Thank you very much um, for all your hard work, CPC members, and uh, wish you a good night. Thank you, George. All right, other folks looking for hands or hands up? Uh, Sarah, can you help out here? Are you seeing anyone? wishing to speak? Yeah, I'm just looking. If anyone wants to speak and wasn't able to, either raise your hand using the button or just wave your hand around and I'll look for you. Not seeing anybody. Not seeing anyone. Lots of folks out there. Now is your, now is your chance. Speak now or, or, uh, we're not. <laughs> we'll give another few seconds for people to weigh in. Again, looking for hands out there. Anybody else? Lots of Northampton Community Music Center logos, but no raised hands. All right, going be an auctioneer here, going once. Going twice and not seeing anybody else. Sarah, right? You're not seeing any? I'm not, no. For those of you that don't know, Sarah LaValle is our assistant planner at For the City and does a wonderful job in uh, helping us stay on track and doing all the work and getting um, these projects, moving them forward from start to finish. So thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, as always, we are, I'm, I am, and I speak for the entire committee, amazed at how articulate and wonderful and committed all of us 
Northampton folks and in surrounding towns who are speaking to Northampton projects are. So thank you so much, all of you, for participating this evening and making your comments known. We have another item on the agenda, and you're certainly welcome to stay for that, which is uh, to look at the financial update. Um, and then we as a committee will decide whether to uh, begin funding recommendations. What we have done in the past is to try to do that funding recommendations all in one evening, and it can be hard to, and, and perhaps give us time to process uh, and mull over what we've heard tonight. Um, so unless there's any, uh, and we'll, we'll get back to this in a moment. So I'll switch agenda items to do the financial update first. But for those of you wishing to, uh, to listen in for funding deliberations, most likely we will put that off until the first Wednesday in uh, December, if you can believe it which will be December the, what would we say, Sarah, the 6th, the 7th, something uh, like that? Three, three weeks from tonight, so that's December 7th. December 7th, okay. Uh, so, uh, Sarah, can you go over the latest financial statement that, that you brought forward for us? All right, so the, uh, this is the spreadsheet that I emailed out um to everybody so you can see our estimated revenue the state match that has come in so far that we at least anticipated coming in at the beginning of the fiscal year again this does not include uh the surplus state match that is yet to be determined and yet to be received once that does come in that will not be available for expenditures this fiscal year it will have to carry over into fiscal year 24. um so expenditures for bonding um expedited and small grant recommendations. So we're basically at 1.86 million um, in funds available for the fiscal year. And if you total up everything that's been requested so far, it is uh, just about one and a half million. So potentially everything could be funded this round if that's the way that the committee decided to go. As Brian mentioned earlier, there is another funding round coming up in the spring. Um, there's no requirement that any funds be retained for that funding round, but that's been the, the CPC's general practice to allow some flexibility for applicants. Uh, committee members, uh, does anyone have questions for Sarah regarding the budget? Anybody out there with questions for Sarah? So um, once again, to reiterate, those folks sticking around for our meeting. Uh, it's important to note that um, that we have two rounds. We have a fall and a and a spring round. And for the fall, we have 1.4 million requests, uh, but that does not include what requests will come in in the spring. So we try to try to withhold at least some of that money. Uh, but in this case, we have 1.8 million, so we're looking at about 400,000. If we were to fully fund all the projects, 400,000 that would be carried over for funding in the, in the spring. So that's, that's, that's a great thing. Uh, last chance, any questions from committee members? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just wanna be, I wanna be absolutely certain because I, I uh, so what you said, Sarah, is no matter what we get from the governor's supplemental, it's not gonna drop this year. It won't drop until 24, 2024, right? That's correct. So once okay. the city has set the tax rate, uh, anything that comes in after that is not available to be spent for this fiscal year. Uh, yeah, so no, we'll, I was speaking carry over into FY twenty four. I was speaking specifically about whatever the the new our share of the new twenty million is. Yeah. Uh, so so that will come in and and we'll see it in our revenue, but we won't actually be able to allocate it to any project. Okay. Great. All right. So this is what we've got. Is what we're saying. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Martha? I just have a question. Um, it's a little tangential, but I'm, it's more of a curiosity around the debt service. Is that uh, projected to continue, Sarah? Do you know that off the top of your head? And if you don't, um, we can cover that at the next meeting. I'm just curious how many years out we are on that. Uh, let me check that here. Uh, so a lot of our bonding is falling off. And some of the, the larger bonds 
uh, have already been paid. So let's see. So we're. Mm -hmm. I just remember when I started on this committee, which I think was four years ago, there was so much, the bonding obligations were yeah, really, it, it, lo really large. It dropped off pretty substantially. So let's see. So that's 28.20. Well, well, Sarah, searches for that. What Martha's alluding to for those folks who are, are uh, listening in is that if we don't have money, we're able to uh, essentially borrow it for projects. And folks will remember uh, the Florence Fields project, um, yeah. which is a huge amount of money. The Pulaski Park, we funded two, uh, the, the first renovation and the expansion of Pulaski Park. Um, I believe we bonded the library, Sarah, is that right? Uh, and so really big projects, in some cases, multi-million dollar projects. The committees have been able to work with the city and bond or borrow for those. And then we just have to pay that back on a, on a yearly uh, basis. And we've been able to um, uh, get to the end of some of these projects now, which means the money that, that we have available to us is actually more than it has been in the past. Because as we retire the bonds, we, we're able to, to, to spend, more, spend more of our current dollars. So for fiscal year 24, it looks like there's about um, 232,000 in debt service repayment. And that will be for the Bean Allard project, uh, Pulaski mm -hmm. Park Overlook, and the, the um, what's getting to be the end of Florence Fields. Um, and the, the city did actually refinance some of these bonds when interest rates were favorable. Then that wasn't that long ago, but it, it seems like it was. Uh, so that may actually be reduced a little bit. Thank you. Any other questions for Sarah? All right, so as Chris said, it is what it is. We got what we got, and that is $1.8 uh, million, $1.8 something million dollars. Let me get the right. Uh, $1,866,000 uh, and our project totals for this round coming at 1496000 So do the math. It's a little bit, uh, if we were to fully fund, we would be left with a little bit less than 400000 370000 significantly less than, than what we have now. Uh, good with questions for Sarah, good on the finances. Okay, so next on the agenda is to begin funding recommendations uh, with a caveat if time allows. It's now 8, uh, 820, past, already past some of our bedtimes. Um, in the past, what we've done is try to do all of our funding recommendations in one meeting. And the method behind that uh, madness, so to speak, is that um, a lot of us forget We'll forget what happened three weeks ago if we if we don't get through all of that tonight. And given the fact that we have is it twelve projects to look at, um, we can talk about that as a committee. My recommendation as chair is in our past practice has been to delay those funding recommendations so we can address them all in one evening, beginning right at the and have that as our uh, our only task for the. Uh, for the upcoming December uh, meeting. Um, so that would be my, my proposal would be to put that off. Other committee members, can other folks weigh in on that, whether that makes sense to continue what we've been doing or to begin those funding recommendations now. Um, let's see, Chris, comments? No, I'm, 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 if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, Martha? Yeah, I I need some time to review everything, um, including the, all the comments that were made tonight and all of the follow-up um, answers that the applicants provided. So I'd appreciate a couple of weeks to do that. Uh, Jeff? I echo this, the previous comments. Uh, I, I need uh, some time to review um, all 12 proposals. Uh, Julia? The the wiser and older among us have already spoken. I'm with them. Need time, and uh, I would 
defer to our next meeting in December. Uh, Janet? I agree with my colleagues. Uh, let's see. Why am I not seeing other folks on the committee? Why, why did someone just disappear? Uh, oh, there, Jonah, sorry. Jonah. Hi. Uh, I, I, I uh, defer to the those with more experience. I guess the one thing I wanted to perhaps ask for some guidance on is is how we go about. Is there a procedure for this conversation, for this uh, fu these funding decisions? How that, not having done this before, not ever having sat in on such a meeting, could you or somebody just sort of describe uh, how this is done? Does everyone speak? Is it a ranking system? Um, I've been on other committees which have made funding decisions, but I, I've never witnessed how this one operates. Uh, Sarah, you want to help us through that? Answer Jonah's question. Sure. Um, so the the committee's practice has been to operate sort of like a, an online shopping cart or a cart at the grocery store where you might put things in and then decide to take them out and put them back on the shelf later or maybe have a smaller quantity or, of each one of those things. Um, so it's it's really a roundtable sort of open format discussion among the committee. Um, you know, it's not incredibly formal. The committee hasn't found that that worked really well. So it's more of an open discussion about the pros and cons of each project, um, any unresolved questions and issues, um, and a consideration of how much funding is available and how much may be left for the, the upcoming round in the spring. Is that helpful, Jonah? Um, yeah, and and what about that that aspect in terms of um, what we aspire to leave for the spring? Is that something you can one of you can elaborate more on, or is that's not appropriate to discuss that independent of when we actually consider the projects? Well, it's it's a tough one, Jonah. I mean, we we have actually had um, rounds where we've spent just about everything, leaving nothing. For the for the next round, in this case again, if we if we are to fully allocate all of requested funds for the um, for the applicants, we'd be left with three hundred seventy thousand, which may not be close to what the next round is, or it may be more than the next round is. We just don't know that. So, um, our past practice, Jonah, has been to look at the uh, uh, sort of to, to look at the funding cycle and the merit of the projects without really considering what's going on in the, in the future. If they're wonderful projects and we feel comfortable funding them, then we fund them. Um, it's nice to know we, have, we would have 370,000, but again, as you know, single projects can come in uh, as they have um, asking for all or even more than that. So it's a little bit of a crapshoot. We don't know. Uh, but we try to not, I, I think what we what we would not do, or what we have not done, not what we have not, do, we have not done is say, okay, we're gonna, we, we know we have 1.8 million for two rounds, we're gonna leave half of that for next round. And we're not gonna fund six, what would that be? That would be uh, uh, 700,000 of the existing projects. Uh, so we'll, th this, is, this is a, a heavily asked round so we shall see. And again, Jonah, keeping in mind that we always have this bonding opportunity. Now with interest so rates so high, that would be there's more of a fiscal implications to that than they were when interest rates were lower, obviously. But if we got a huge project, affordable housing or else or whatever uh, in the in the spring, bonding is an option uh, for us with the city would acquiesce. Um, we don't like to do that because, again, it carries with it that uh, that additional cost of, of a bond. I don't know if that's helpful or not, Joan, but you'll see, and we'll be and and we'll look to you for how, as a as a um, as a new member of how that process works and whether it works. Uh, it's always good to have new input on on how the process works. So that's a teaser for three weeks from now. <laughs> Uh, Julie? Yeah, um, the other piece that might be helpful 
coming in, Jonah, is that we did draft the um, decision guidelines for uh, for our work. And Sarah, right, we have that document that might help as you're reviewing so that you come in and you think about the general criteria and then the specific criteria, uh, which I, I'm assuming is what we're all gonna be doing on these 12 projects over the next week is taking those guidelines and taking the projects and really writing our notes up so that we can have some great conversation over the course of a few hours in December. Sarah, maybe you can send that out back out to us again, those, um the pages that Julia were referring to and it's like sure, you know, three or four pages right yeah, yeah so that what that did was basically attempt to distill all of the meat of the community preservation plan into you know a few pages to to figure out you know what what's important for funding consideration and what are things that the committee should be looking at both generally and for each individual type of project like historic preservation is its own criteria open space has its own so I can send that out um, and along those lines, you know, usually I will draft a, a council order for each project, assuming that it's being funded in full, um, just for discussion purposes. I, I'll plan to do that again. Um, is there anything else that would be helpful to advance the committee's decision making along? The only thing I can think of, Sarah, and, and committee members chime in on this, please, is, is if we think of conditions or if you think of conditions on those. Uh, proposals that would be really helpful uh so for for folks listening in on this meeting that are not members of the of the committee we will often fund projects with certain conditions attached um and with affordable housing we have those sort of affordable housing restrictions that that go into those as as conditions and and other stuff as well so as we're um going through the merits of projects committee members if we can be thinking of of conditions that we want to we might want to attach to that and sarah you're so good at um teasing those out as well so if you could provide us with some of the conditions that you think are appropriate that that would be helpful to expedite our decision making in the so Any other questions on this regarding the funding recommendations and what we need to do for uh, Sarah going forward? Anything else on funding recommendations? So it sounds like the 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 uh, uh, that we are all in agreement that we're going to put that off until the the first week in uh, in December. And inviting all community folks to to come in and uh, not participate in that discussion. We do limit that to that discussion to committee members, but to be privy to that. Uh, and again, an attempt to maintain maximum transparency. That's that's really good to know. Uh, last agenda item. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? I was just going to ask and uh, uh, chime in. Is there anybody who knows that they can't be here on the uh, on the on that for the next meeting? Sounds like a no. Yeah, the more if we can be in uh, as a full committee, that's really important. I think that might be what you're alluding to, Chris. Uh, exactly. So. Yeah. So we encourage uh, full attendance is really good. We're missing a couple folks tonight. It's okay. Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? That looks like a Julia hand, a second. That looks like a Jonah. Uh, all in favor, we can just wave goodbye or thumbs up. Thanks, folks, for coming in. Join us on the 6th of December, as we said. Uh, and thank you for all your articulate and well-spoken, um, uh, enthusiastic response to some of these wonderful projects that we have.